Okay, so a quick look at um, skills and when you're looking to highlight strengths and weaknesses in terms of skills, how to kind of approach this task within your coursework. So there's three things that you've got to think about when you're looking at your skills. You've got to identify what that particular skill is and whether it is a strength or a weakness. You then need to justify why you think that skill is either a strength or a weakness and you then have to look at how that uh, uh, skill being either a strength or a weakness is affecting the overall success of your or your team's performance. Okay, So I'm going to talk you through a strength, I'm going to talk you through a weakness and kind of show you how we would approach that. So we'll start off then by looking at a football pass and uh, we're going to look at that in terms of saying that this particular football pass or this player's passing um, has been a strength. So we might talk about that in terms of short range, pass, uh, range passing, medium range, long range, it's whatever you happen to see at the time and if you think that's a strength then you've obviously identified that as being a strength. You then have to justify this and the justification is slightly more complicated because you have to look at your justification in terms of breaking the skill down into its preparation phase, execution phase, recovery phase and the actual result. Okay. Now for the football pass we're going to look at it in terms of uh, the execution phase and so we're going to talk about the fact that the player when they're making contact with the ball they're making good contact and they're getting the ball exactly where they want it to go and the passing is successful the majority of the time so you might say that 75% of the time or 85% of the time the pass is going to where it's supposed to go or you might say 9 times out of 10 the pass is going to where it's supposed to go. As a result of that, we then look at how that affects the overall performance or the overall success um, of that individual. So by the passing being accurate and getting to where it needs to go, it means that the team can retain possession. And as a result of the team being in possession, it means that they get to control the game. And if they are in control of the game, then that team is more likely to score. You're therefore more likely to win. Okay. Let's look then at another skill and we'll look at it in terms of it perhaps being a weakness. So this time we've picked a basketball layup. Okay, so you may be watching a basketballer and you've noticed that their layups are unsuccessful much of the time. You've got to then justify why that is. So is it down to the preparation phase, the execution phase, the recovery phase or the result? Well, this, for this example, we might say it's perhaps because of the preparation phase. We might say that there's potentially an issue with the player's footwork or their angle of approach in towards the basket. So if it was something simple like footwork, if it was perhaps a junior player or something, they might be getting blown for a foul because they might be travelling, they might be taking too many steps. Obviously, if they're a more seasoned player, then it could be something wrong perhaps in the approach angle that they've got into the basket and as a result they are missing their layups. Okay? Now the knock-on effect of that, now we've justified it, is how is it affecting the overall success of that player or that team? Well, it's obvious that some of the layups are being missed, but as a result of that, the opposition are therefore winning rebounds, and because the opposition are winning rebounds, it then means they're going down the other end and they're putting pressure on your team because they're going down the other end and putting pressure on your basket and potentially scoring more baskets than you. Okay, So that's one strength, one weakness. Remember, we have to identify what the particular skill is. We have to justify why it's an issue, looking at the prep, X, rec, and res. And we have to make sure that we've said how each skill, whether it's a strength or a weakness, is affecting the overall performance. Okay, so in addition to highlighting um, your skills as either strengths or weaknesses and talking about the reasons for that, so justifying it and talking about the effect on performance, you also need to be able to demonstrate your knowledge of the different elements of the theory areas that we cover. So that's the physiological things, psychological or socio-cultural. For, for each skill that you're able to highlight as either a strength or weakness, Part of that justification or part of the reason for us saying that it's a strength or a weakness, we need to really be demonstrating some of our knowledge. So in this example here, we've looked at a netball player. And basically this netball player we've described as having a good quality netball chest pass. Um, the pass is nice and strong, they've got a good execution phase, um, they're applying a large force to the ball and basically the ball's getting to where it needs to go. 
Okay. We then would obviously talk about the fact that this is going to lead to increased possession for the team, etc., etc. All things go with that. What we also need to do, though, is we then need to bring in some of our theory knowledge, and that's what we can see over on this side. And for this particular example, uh, we've brought in some of the socio-cultural. Basically, what we've said for the netball pass is that the reason for this particular player having a good technique for their chess pass is because they will have learned the skill through the school system within this country because P is compulsory for everybody between 5 and 16 years of age. Okay. Um, obviously when you do your PE lessons it teaches you the fundamentals of sport and again that is all talked about within this particular example. If you wanted to put a slightly different slant on things you didn't want to talk about socio-cultural for this particular one you could have perhaps picked up uh, something out to do with it. Uh, physiological and you could have talked about some of the muscles that were involved within that chest pass but again talking about how they've led to effective performance so you could perhaps talk about that they've obviously got strong triceps and that they've obviously done some training as a result of them having the strong triceps it means they're able to whip those passes in really really quickly on that chest pass and for the passes to get to where they want them to go okay so we've got to spot the strength or the weakness we've got to name which skill it is We've got to talk about and justify which phase it is, okay? We then need to mention the effect on performance and we've got to link um, our theory elements in, psychological, physiological and socio-cultural in with how that's affected the performance as well. Okay, so then moving things on and trying to apply this to an actual answer then. So um, up in front of me here, is an example of a student answer, and I'm gonna quickly talk you through some of the strengths of this answer um, and some of the weaknesses of this answer. So straight away, um, this candidate has talked about one of the strengths he initially noticed was passing. And by mentioning the passing, they've identified the skill, okay? What they've then gone to do is they've talked about the fact that as a result of that passing being good, the team are able to retain possession and it meant that they've stopped and created goal scoring opportunities. So they've talked about how that particular skill, the passing, um, has led to the overall performance being successful. They also mentioned tackling. So again, they've identified a skill in tackling um, and they've talked about the fact that players track back from an attacking position to win the ball and that this was crucial and they've then talked about how it affects performance by saying it alleviates pressure on the defenders um, and leads to you regaining possession and that means that then overall the team can start a counter attack. Okay? So they've identified two skills, passing, tackling, the speed strengths and they've talked about the fact that they in turn lead to uh, possession being retained and also alleviating pressure on defenders, things like that. So they've talked about the effect of overall performance. So that part of the answer was good. What's missing from this is that there is no justification as to why they were good at passing or tackling. So basically this particular candidate and this particular answer has not mentioned or justified any of the different phases of any of those skills to actually explain and justify why the skills are successful and why they're a strength in the first place. They've not talked about the preparation, execution, recovery or results phases of those skills. If they'd done that, then this would have been a much, much better quality answer and they would have been able to access some of the higher marks. In addition to that, they could have also have talked about or bought in some of the areas from the different theory elements as well. Again, that's missing from this answer, so that's going to limit how many marks it could potentially get. Okay then, so to finish off, here is an example of a level six answer. A level six answer meaning that it really thoroughly goes through the identification goes through the justification and it also gives uh, the impact on overall performance. Now in this particular example it's looking at netball and it's looking at a skill based weakness. Okay, So this particular candidate has talked about the fact that intercepting is a weakness for the player that they've actually observed. The next part of the answer, the next three to four lines, are all evidence that explain why they think that particular skill that intercepting is a weakness for that player. They then go on to talk about the fact that this would put her team behind, um, and that obviously talks about uh, or goes into some detail about what the impact on the team's performance would be. 
Things are then reiterated, but more detail is given. So the candidate then explains that it's particularly catching one-handed that's a problem, which is part of intercepting as a skill. And again, they give further evidence for this. They talk about the fact it's an advanced skill. They talk about some of the things they saw the candidate doing wrong while they were trying to perform that skill. And again, the next three or four lines are all evidence, all justifications for what they've actually seen. They then finish up by talking about how as a result of the lack of intercepting, particularly uh, catching one-handed being an issue, talk about the fact that that slowed down the game and it could risk replaying the ball um, and that would mean that the team, the other team would be able to often get the ball from that player as they weren't able to catch it. So it basically talks about the pressure that that player's team would be under as a result of them having this particular skill, the intercepting and catching one-handed as being a weakness. So this is a good answer because it very clearly explains and highlights the exact skill and names it. It justifies it with lots and lots of evidence and it gives some clear examples of how it's affecting the team's performance.